Kelly, and I'm a psychic medium. Your granny is behind you right now. Having this gift has not been easy, but with a lot of soul searching and help from my granny, I was finally able to embrace who I am. You have an entourage of dead people. Now you tell me if there's not something bigger than us. Now I have clients all over, and it is my mission to help them find their way. And when I need a break, oh, I go off grid, baby. She's she's doing the limbo. Yes. With the love of my life, Paul. He's gonna learn, or the boss is gonna smack him down, ah! baby. Ah! Hey, and our chosen go. family. I don't think you ever need a psychic quite like me. <laughs> Today, Liz and I are going to a used bookstore, and I just love books. I cannot wait to get my hands on a book. Dr. Charlotte Stone is an expert in psychology of serial killers with a gift for communicating with the spirits of murdered victims. Ha! Hmm, sounds familiar. I go around the corner and I see these two women. I could not help myself. I'm Kelly. I'm <laughs> Megan. I'm sorry for the weird look here, but... <laughs> That's okay. I'm Andrea. I see that Megan and Andrea have a mother-daughter connection, but it's not blood-related. You guys are related in some way, aren't you? Like in a yeah. weird way. Like you're not her mother and you're not her daughter. No. Are you with her father? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that makes sense. Now that makes sense. <laughs> Megan has company and I know this is gonna be real hard for her. Who is the woman that's passed that was very important to you? Uh, one of my good friends. She's right here. And was it very quick, her passing? Yes. And very traumatic in some ways. And you hold that in your soul. I sense that very clearly. It's a pain when you think about it. Because you miss her very much. Because a part of who you were was a connection to who she was. And when she had to go home, you lost a piece of you. Yeah. Well, she's here. You think you're emotional? She's emotional. Because <laughs> she misses you like you wouldn't believe. In order to move forward, Megan is going to have to let go of this guilt that she's been holding on to. You have the best guardian angel on the other side you could ever ask for. Because this chick would move the mount a mountain for you. She says, don't grieve for me. Live your life. And I'll live it with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you for allowing me to look into your life. Mm -hmm. I am a woman that has a crazy freaking ass ability. A good part of the time, I wished it away. I don't wish anything away anymore. I embrace it. And then I get to meet great people like you. I didn't think she was going to know when she knew. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm think skeptical she anyway, back on. but... I'm married to her father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I guess... It's kind of weird. It's not weird people. for us, but I yeah. guess it would be weird because we're so like close in age, yeah. I guess. My best friend that passed, I knew the reason she passed and I always kind of blame it on myself. So it's always nice to hear that it's not your fault, I guess, and that like they're watching over you. They hear you talking to them kind of thing. Yeah, she knew. Yeah. Megan is going to be just fine. She's got this. Liz? Elizabeth! She was just gone such a long time that uh, I just was so relaxed. I fell asleep. They're closing. Oh. We've got to go. Oh. I can't believe you fell asleep. Come oh. on, let's go. Why? Yeah, why? Why would you like cooking? Why? No idea. I don't know why, Kelly. I don't know how to answer it, really. 25 years ago, maybe? 25, 30 years ago, I started cooking, and I've been cooking since. My husband loves to cook, and he's good at it. I like the feeling of cooking for somebody else. I love it. What's your favorite thing to make? 
Seafood linguine, I wish I would have made. I said, it's the best thing I can make. It's an expensive meal. It costs quite a bit, quite a few bucks, but it's awesome. Okay, what's the second best thing you can make? Oh, uh, you know? You make a good, really good meatloaf, hon. Oh, yeah, I make a good meatloaf, not that, but... It's either gonna be bear meat or deer meat, four or five pounds of hamburger, I'm gonna put two, three onions, one tomato soup, then put that for an hour and a half, two hours in the oven. Paul's meatloaf is so good. Holy Hannah, it's the best thing I have ever eaten. There is nothing like backwoods comfort food. Mm. You like to entertain. Yeah, I like to, yeah. I like cooking and I like after everything is done there, sitting down. And I like the company. Probably too much. That's what I like the most, I think. Sitting down with a meal and having a good yarn, the bunch of us, and laugh. That's what I like. Paul is amped up. It's actually an Acadian tradition to celebrate family, food, and fun. And we're going to have a blast. Yeehaw! When you're yep. cooking, you're just shining. You've been doing it now for 25 years. Yeah. I haven't died. I've, yeah. I've eaten your food. Oh, you're still alive. We do this every time we gather and we have people over. Why don't we get the guys to come down? Yeah. And you'll be like the head chef, and they'll be uh, like your sous chefs. I like the sounds of that. Yep. Kind of a bomb. His favorite role. Hmm. Maybe I can show my boys a few tricks of mine. Maybe I can. Before the night is over, they'll know how to cook meatloaf and potatoes. If not, the boss will have to jump him again. <laughs> All the boys. Oh. I can't wait to have Dave here. Oh. He's gonna learn or the boss is gonna smack him down. Ah. Baby. Ah. Hey, ah. we go. Today, I'm doing a reading on a lady named Alicia. I typically begin by saging and blessing and cleansing my cards and picking three cards for myself. I like to see what I am up against and also it sets my intentions for the day and the reading for the client. I ask the universe to guide me and help me find the answers that Alicia seeks. I've been to different tarot card readers, uh, palm readers, that kind of thing, but I haven't found one that I felt there was a genuine connection with. As I kind of look retrospectively at the last 10, 15 years of my life, I'm seeing that I'm repeating a lot of not great choices. And so I'm trying to figure out why that is. Hello! Hi. How are you? You are Alicia. Yes, Alicia. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, we're hugging, okay. <laughs> I have no problem with personal space. I hope you don't. <laughs> I guess I don't now. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, let's go in. All right, okay. let's go in. I'm sensing some major trauma there with Alicia. Your energy is definitely strong. I sense you have had depression. Mm -hmm. You've had anxiety. Mm -hmm. I sense that love was not always good to you. Therefore, you have a sense of wanting to walk by yourself and yet wanting to be loved with every ounce of your being. So you're not a complicated woman. <laughs> you just have a duality. You have the side that will survive. And you learned that very young. What happened to you when you were a child? Somewhere in your childhood, you were hurt. I know that's a hard one. Um. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. We lived in a house Myself and my mother and my brother yeah. with our stepfather. Yeah. He was had an evilness about him. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I'm sorry as a woman, but I'm also sorry as the little girl I have in me. And I would never want that to happen to anybody. But I need you to know that it has made you who you are. Absolutely. But by God, girl, you hung in there. Because there were moments there you didn't know if you were going to be able to. Am I right? You're right. 
Yeah, <clears throat> but you found a way to survive. You have children, don't you? I do. One different, two the same. Yeah. And you made a decision a long time ago that you would never allow them to walk that journey that you had to walk. Mm -hmm. You moved away from it, but it followed you. Mm -hmm. Alicia's past followed her. And we've got to go deeper here and look so she can feel better and be healthier and happier. Is your stepfather past? Yes. Um, holy moly, moly, moly. I don't know any other way to say this, but he's here. And I know that makes you want to vomit. He wants to talk to you, and I know that's the last thing you want, but there's things you need to know. And once you know it, you can let it go. And together, together, you won't walk this journey by yourself. I will help you. I want to help you. But I need you to know that we need to go deeper in this. And it has to be dealt with and closed so you can be what you were meant to be. I want to help you. Would you allow me that? We got to walk it at some point, don't we? There is a yeah. little girl in you that is still holding on to that pain. And I want you to be free from that. This woman has walked through fire. But in order to go forward, she has to face this head on. She's not getting rid of me just yet. We had to go two counties over to find a police officer that would enter the house because they knew him. Nobody would come in. The last 10, 15 years of my life, I'm seeing that I'm repeating not great choices. Somewhere in your childhood, you were hurt. Myself and my mother and my brother yeah. with our stepfather. He had an evilness about him. I don't know any other way to say this, but he's here. And I know that makes you want to vomit. We need to go deeper in this. It's been a week since I've done a reading for Alicia. And I'm at her house to do a follow-up. There are some questions that I've had for a long time for my stepfather who's passed away quite some time ago closure with those types of things. I'm also kind of looking for a little bit of guidance where my path needs to go next. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh, How are you? Oh my God. Alicia is a strong woman. No doubt about that. But in order to move on, she's got to face that little girl that never had a chance to come out. Is this your family? This is. This is my mom. Oh my gosh, your mom looks familiar. Yeah. When we ended up leaving my stepfather, I didn't understand what had happened. She's, she's with me most of the time. I had watched her protect us. There was a lot of physical, there was a lot of emotional, there was a lot of psychological. There were an awful lot of weapons in the house. When we finally got out, the house that we were living in, we had to go two counties over to find a police officer that would enter the house because they knew him. Nobody would come in. As much as you may think you are not meant to let go of that, it is so not who you are now that it's almost funny. That little girl who was hurt by her stepfather is not the woman I'm looking at right now. You've already survived the worst. One of the things that I have thought through the years as I have been on my healing journey, yep. I've always wondered, my stepfather, for somebody to have that kind of, of I know. energy, he, as I went through my journey, I realized as I got older that... Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. He was damaged too. I am so proud of you. 
You are an amazing woman because you are actually speaking with empathy towards this whole situation. And you got to a point where you saw that he was not just a bad person. He was a broken person. He was broken. Somebody broke him. He was damaged too. But he walked the road that he knew. That's all he knew. That's all he knew. And I've always wondered before he passed away if he ever found any kind of peace. He found it when he crossed over. Okay. Because when he got to realize with empathy, with consciousness and awareness, what he had done to you and the magnitude of it. And he realized what was wrong. But he found some. In himself, yes. Good. In himself, he found peace. Okay. That he was sorry for what he had done. He lifted that guilt off of me, which was really the best thing that could have happened because it wasn't mine. And so that was, that was pretty powerful for me. Alicia's unfinished business with her stepfather was holding her back. But, hmm, there's someone else here that wants to see her move forward. <laughs> I hear, all right, all right. So boys. Cooking class, right? This is your first cooking class uh -oh. from Boss Hog here. <laughs> What's so funny, boys? I'm gonna wipe that smile off your face, Boss, there before the day is over. I'm gonna be the boss here today. Boss Hog for Paul, it basically describes him. It's, it's pretty close. The perfect match for that apron. Have you done any cooking before, you guys? Sheldon can cook a little bit. Oh, yeah. Everything that happens in the kitchen here, boys, stays, it stays here. Kitchen, huh? Like Colonel Sanders. You're not going to go give your recipe to Tom, Dick, and Harry down the road here. It's <laughs> <Nope, nope. laughs> top secret. Don't this worry, Paul. I'll, secret. I'll forget all about it, Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's top secret about potatoes? They're round, they grow on the ground. You cook them, you peel them, you make french fries. Come on, Paul. There's one thing, you guys. You're gonna have to listen to Boss Hog. Oing me one. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We thought we were just coming to have a simple, fun. You're being an outrageous boss. That's why they call you Boss Hog. We got aprons here for you guys. I want a nice one. I want something that looks like professional, Paul. I want to be the professional in the group. So I got a special <laughs> one for Teldy. An apron? I've never used an apron before. I get dirty. I don't care. Yeah, I put in me on that one. Pink, Paul, the pink one. No, pink one, no. Paul. You can't do that to me. Well, Sheldon and, and Dave have to wear an apron, and I wish one of them would have a pink one. Now, are you guys ready? No, no. Well, no maybe. <laughs> this is my cooking show, and you guys is too. So we can't fail this. Yeah, you got a name for this show, Paul? This is gonna be the show. Cooking with boss hog. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, that, that's yeah right. it sounds yeah. like you. So. Yep. Yeah. Hello, beautiful people. Here I am again. And today I'm here to tell you all about my bag of tricks. When I hit something much bigger, like an entity or an evil energy, I have to bring out the big guns. And that, my friends, is this. It's my holy water and I don't leave home without it. Holy water has been used throughout the ages by all types of religions, and in truth, you've probably experienced seeing it used by watching horror movies. In horror movies, you see it used to combat or get rid of demons, poltergeists, uh, possessions. But the thing is, you have got to make sure it's blessed by either a spiritual leader or you can do it yourself with the moon. And that is why for me, holy water has been the goal too, because of my faith. If it wasn't for having holy water, uh, seriously, there are things I've had to go through I don't think I would have survived. A lot of people have asked me how I get my holy water. Well, it's very simple. I am very fortunate to have a very special priest who has agreed to bless my water and all my tools, 
plus myself. And it works for me because it is my fate base. But I need you to know, everybody out there, that there's another way, and that is to use the moon. We all know that nature's power is huge, and therefore the moon controls everything. All you do is you take a bowl. You can use rainwater, distilled water, purified water, but you put the bowl on a windowsill, specifically outside or on a table where it will be in direct line to the full moon. When the moon's rays touch it, it literally blesses it. You get it out before sunrise, bring it in, cover it, and you get a little spray bottle. You fill it up, and thus you have holy water. Whether it's holy water blessed by priest or water blessed by the moon. You're armed with something that will help you get rid of any spooky stuff that might be lurking in your home. And if you need help, you call on me. I'll be there. Blessed be my friends. I have a new client today, and her name is Pam, and she's here for past life regression. Unresolved trauma from past lives can actually affect this life, and it's important that that trauma is dealt with. I feel something powerful coming for Pam. Well, it's the idea that uh, discovering something potentially about myself that I don't know. I mean, I'm fairly old, so I know a lot about myself. So to think that there could be things that will be revealed that weren't before is a little bit exciting. Hopefully it's good things. I don't want to find out that I was like some sort of murderer in a past life or something, I suppose. <laughs> now we're going to go on a journey. But first, I'm going to count from one to five. And at the count of five, you will have totally and completely allowed yourself to go into a deep state of hypnosis. It is as simple as that. Breathing is all you need to focus on. In, and then you breathe out. That slow and peaceful breathing. One, the top of your head to the tip of your toes. You actually feel the energy, that tension coming out of your fingers. And you're going to allow yourself to go into a past life that has the most traumatic, most life-changing impact that you have ever experienced. And you will do that because you are ready to do this. You are wanting it. And you're now on the other side of the fog. It may seem harsh to bring somebody to the most traumatic time in a past life, but it has to be that way to deal with it. And you're walking. Now, do you see your feet? Yeah. I want you to tell me, are they big or small? They're small. I want you to go up your legs, up to your chest. What are you wearing? Dress. And what color is that dress? It's like a pink. Now, can you see your home? Yeah. I want you to go to the front entrance. It's a big door. It's a big door. Put your hand on the doorknob, and you're going to open it. And as you turn it and you open it, and your eyes become accustomed, and the first thing you see as you walk in is? Fireplace. And now look around. Is there anybody there? Yeah. Who is there? My mom. She calls you by name. What is your first name? My name is Pam. This sometimes happens when something very painful occurred and wasn't dealt with properly. The client will subdue it, and unless they're under hypnosis, they won't look at it again. So it's a very good way for them now to address it and move forward. See yourself sitting down. Is there others sitting there with you? Yeah. Can you tell me who's there? It's my nan. And I want you to look across. My granddad. That just warms my heart. He obviously meant so much to her. And who is sitting next to your granddad? That's okay. Breathe. 
Breathe. It's okay. It's okay. You have the remote control. Breathe. Breathe. Who is on your right? It's my little boy. And why is it so emotional? It's okay. You're watching. It's okay. It's okay. You can say it. Because he's dead. It was a long time ago now. I'm so surprised that it was so much in the forefront. Are you saying your goodbyes to him? I should go. You can, yes. You're now in that past life. Is there others sitting there with you? Uh, it's my little boy. Why is it so emotional? That's okay. Because he's dead. Pam came to me to do past life regressions to see if she could uncover any truths about herself that she did not know. However, something rare happened. Pam is recalling a past trauma in her current life. The loss of a child is so difficult to let go of, and I know that pain all too well. I know Pam can move through this but we have to put him to rest. I want you to look at him. Look at that face. Take it all in. How old is he? He's just a baby. See how absolutely gorgeous he was? See it clearly. Now go to the moment where you will lose him, because we want you to go see that. But you're going to be okay. What happens to him? It's just, it's just too little. He's too little, he can't breathe. How does that make you feel? Really sad. Yes. You say your goodbyes to him. I should go. You can, yes. You can do it. You're holding him in your arms. And now we're going to go forward. You're going to be okay because you have loved him. And you have held him. And you can never forget that. See it clearly. It was a long time ago now. I'm so, I'm so surprised that it, it was so, so much in the forefront. I was so emotional about it. It was almost 40 years ago now. Losing that first child is something that you, you really, you'll never forget it, but you do maybe almost bury it a little bit or maybe it was never really dealt with. I am so proud of Pam. She did not want to say goodbye, but she did. And now, it's time to move forward. You can open your eyes. It's okay. I know what you're feeling. I had, I lost a baby. So I've walked your shoes. I knew what you were going to say. I had everything I could to not cry. I, I, I know. I really did I see the child. Like, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it was. But I didn't want to. I know. I oh, didn't no. want to. No, because everything in you knew the pain that it yeah, would. Yeah, exactly. Know. I know. But you did wonderfully. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm feeling a little overwhelmed and strangely peaceful. By doing this, Pam has freed herself of this dark cloud that has been hanging over her for 40 years. Although this was hard, oh, it was a hard one. It was so worth it. It's brought so many things to the forefront. 
I'm really quite grateful that it has. It was never resolved and now I've sort of looked it square in the face and realised that it isn't going to break me. So for that I'm, I'm actually really happy and pleased. Are you glad you had the experience? Yes, I am. Our lives can get very busy. We forget to look inside ourselves and realise what we truly are feeling. Pam has been holding on to this for decades. And she trusted me and the regression process to deal with it. I'm so grateful I got to meet this woman. It's what it's all about. I love, love my job. Hello. Hi. Last week's reading with Alicia revealed a lot of issues with her abusive stepfather who's passed and left her with a lot of questions. I'm visiting her today to guide her through these issues and perhaps answer a few of her questions. She now knows that he's sorry for the pain he's caused her and he's found peace. But there are more messages that Alicia needs to hear today. Let's talk about Mama, because I'm gonna be honest with you, from the moment I came and we looked at your babies on that wall, she's been with you, okay? Yeah. This woman is not going anywhere. We would just have fun no matter what we were doing, driving down the road and, and laughing or singing or at the music festivals and sitting around and singing and, and she'd always be the one going, okay, everybody come over here, because she's gonna sing. And I would sing and she would just sit back and be like, See, I told you. Your mother's saying that she's very happy that my favorite song, it was her favorite song. Mama, he's crazy. She wants you to know that when you sing that, <sighs> Mama, he's crazy. Crazy <clears throat> over me. Come on, Alicia. You got this. And in my life, where he says he always wants to be. I've never been so in love. He beats all I ever seen. Mama, he's crazy. He's crazy over me. There was no way she could have known that that was the song that my mom first made me sing, or, <laughs> yeah, she made me sing it. <clears throat> and it was like my mom was sitting beside me singing with me. She's telling me to give you a kick in the ass. <laughs> That's exactly the word she would use. No, she's as simple yeah. as that. Alicia is extremely talented. And her mother, she wanted me to push her to embrace that talent. Your mama wants you to climb the highest mountain and sing to your heart's content because the right person will hear you and you will touch many because you're meant to, okay? Now, I want you to know that every single time she talks to you, and you hear her. It is you that needs to validate that. You need to say, I hear you. I understand that you want me to be better. Mm -hmm. Alicia's mom believes in her. But now, Alicia's got to believe in herself. Shine your light, girl. <laughs> you shine. Surprise, surprise. It's still not quite here at the house. After you peel them off, you cut them maybe in three, like this and like this. And they have these yep. carrots? Cut yeah. like this, Paul. No, 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 Sheldon, no. listen, there'll be no funny to no, left. Dave, what the same with this. What do I do with this? When I say that Dave can't cook there, I mean he can't cook. He doesn't cook eggs in the morning. He'll have his cereal. And if he was all alone, he'd probably eat cereal 24 hours a day. Okay, hold your carrot like this. No, <laughs> Dave. I may not be able to cook. I may not be the chef that you are, Paul. But I think I can peel a carrot. 
Come on. Oh, it's a carrot. Well, I tell you what, the carrot is not looking good at all. The carrot looks like a match that has been taken and peeled off right through till there's nothing left. I this know way. you didn't cook before. This way. Yeah, like, that's oh, right. Oh, you yeah, lift man. it and you go like that with you, it. You just go tell me the one spot. Yeah, yeah. Paul is really putting the boss in Boss Hog. Was this cooking show a bad idea? This is how you do it? Yeah. Cut the gold ends there off. I'm gonna take some meat out here. And... Oh, wait, wait. It's going all over the place. I'll show you how the boss cuts an onion. I go like this with my oh. onion. Planer? Well, you can take over my carrots if you want. You're, you're doing a damn good job. Show me again. Yeah. You got the boss to do the work. Right on, buddy. Right on. I'm gonna roll these crackers. We'll put them in there. No, just take them like this. No, it's not. No, that's See? not broken up. Hey. Paul, that damn rolling pin there, you better put it away, because you're going to be wearing it at one place you don't like, where the sun don't shine. What? Who's boss here? Well, according to this. That's right. Paul Sit down Paul. there and watch me. Oh. You'll make a mess of this Mies Lowe before the day is over, that guy. He's got to listen. Come on, Paul. I'm pretty sure you can see that he's playing you. Well, I finally figured a way to make Paul do something. We have to get him mad and act dumb. He'll do the whole thing. I don't think this is fit to eat, really. Those three guys, they're getting on my nerves. They don't want to listen. Go like that and squash the whole thing. Take your time, Gus. I've been throwing this, whatever you oh. want to call it, for the last half hour now. Yeah, this this kitchen is, is getting to get the best of me, man. I, I think I need a break. I think I better, I think I'll take up smoking again or something. Think you're going to cook in five minutes and be done? That's a, yeah. That's what I was hoping. Why don't you three of you take a hike? Yeah, I told you it would work. Paul got mad, kicked us out. He's going to do the supper. I think they might be fired for the rest of the day. Oh, I am staying out of this one. Oh, it's where it's ready. It's been a while since I last seen Pam, and I'm super excited to meet with her. Actually quite interested in seeing what's unfolded since our last meeting. She had asked me to write down my experience and then keep something of a journal daily. I have to admit, I didn't do it daily, but I have noted different things that I felt were different or significant. Initially, when I left, I was very, very emotional that first child was the most significant part of the regression. It left me really sort of shattered, sort of just emotionally overwhelmed because I felt like I was right back there. Other things have sifted through, so I have some questions. Before our final meeting, I want to take the time to pick a card for Pam to see if there's any other truths that she needs to face to move on. Pam. There you are. I <sighs> Okay, are you yes. ready for this? I am. Awesome. I am. When you were on that couch, it was unbelievable to see in a sense because it was so emotional. You were there. Yes. Like it was real. Yeah. And it made me think, oh my gosh, how did she put all those pieces together when she left here? about losing that child. And now, here we are so many years after, and this is brought up. I, I, in some ways, it was almost like giving myself permission yes. to fall apart. Yes. But still feeling secure enough that I was going to be okay. So Pam, I pulled a card before you came, and I'm gonna show you what it is. It's the world. And the world reflects that you are at a point in your life where you're changing cycles. Shedding the skin then? Hell yes. You're not done. You're not done by far. These are the tools you were allowed when you were put on this earth. The cycle turned a certain way. You lived that cycle. You did it. Now it's turning the other way. In that process comes new beginnings, opportunities to be everything you may have felt you couldn't be in your younger years. So there's no limits. The only limits you're going to come across is going to be yours now. Oh, it's come with responsibility already. Do you want to give all that responsibility to something that 
will take over. No, I see, don't. You've I don't drive. Enough. I'm driving. Aha, uh -huh, get my drift. I'm driving. So now you decide what you want. When a person gets this card, you're looking at at least 30 more years. And I'm loving this card. You best be ready, girlfriend, because <laughs> you're in for quite a ride. You think you've had a life? It's been about everybody else. Now it's yours. It has. I know. Because you were great at it. I feel like you're looking in my head. Stop. <laughs> It's no longer the part you need to play. The part you need to play is your own now. Oh Choose. my God, that's wildly exciting. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> oh my God. God, thank you. Oh, blessed be. Thank you. Thank you. I'm intrigued. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go home and, and uh, look it up and even understand where I've been and, and know that that was, that was good and it was a job done. Giving it some time between then and now, I do feel at peace with it. Very much appreciative of Kelly. You know when you meet that person, you're sort of connected. It's like you were in the same tribe before and there's a little moment of recognition and I did instantly feel that with her. You wrote a song after you saw me. I would love to hear it. Come on, Alicia. I've been working with Alicia to overcome some of the demons that have been haunting her since her early childhood. And so now she is ready to step out of the box she's been in for so long and reach her full potential. But first, she needs a little help. She needs a little help to believe in herself. And I know how to push. Alicia's mother agrees in spirit. Now it's time to sing, girl. Now I heard that you wrote a song last week after you saw me. No matter what your experiences are, you can find a song that fits. And you can find a song that can express how you're feeling or where your heart is at in that moment or where along your journey you want to be. And so I think it has this amazing power to keep people connected. I would love to hear it. I would really, truly love to hear it. Would you be willing to let me hear you? Here's the test. Come on, Alicia. I would do that. Would you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. jump in. Yes! I knew she could do this. I want to know your mind when you wrote it. So after we had our first meeting, I came home and, and sat down and started to write. And so the concept came into my mind, who would I be if I hadn't had those experiences and hadn't um, gone through what I've gone through? Here we go. <laughs> I wonder who I could have been in this world If I could let go of this hurt little girl But she's in my soul and she's in my heart and always on my mind This is where I, I met a lot of my musician friends and, and um, this is where I spent a lot of time so with my mom push my tears away when I look for my mom this is where I look for her spirit my mom is present with me and this is where I feel her the most don't want the silence of my tears to be the loudest sound my job here is done and I will hear this woman's voice on the radio darn soon What a freaking mess, you! Paul. What? Paul is having a full-blown meatloaf meltdown. Oh, I need no, some nerve pills. No, you have three guys. They no. left. They're going outside. Because you hurt their feelings. Okay. Do you like it when somebody tells you when you do something wrong? No, you? Yeah, that's right. Okay. You're too hard. Paul means well, but sometimes we, we just got to check in. Remember, why they're your friends. Yeah. 
Sheldon and Gus and Dave, they're really good friends. They help me out if I need help, and they can't, you can't have better friends than that. You gotta get this done, because there's okay. three men out there yeah. that probably feel just as yucky as you. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we're just learning to go. <laughs> I've never cooked before you either. This is my first time yeah. cooking. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna apologize to these guys in my own way. Look at there. What? Oh, it's kind of done. cool up there, you <laughs> guys. Hey, what are you doing, Paul? Okay, everybody see that? Only Paul will do that. Nobody else. One of a kind. Well, the boss had to come like this to get you guys in if he could. Paul, that's gonna make us go in our cars. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna make us run. Yeah. That's enough, Paul. We, we we don't wanna see no more. We're, we're gonna go. We're gonna give in. Hey, I'm sorry, you guys. Hey, hey we gotta go back. Sorry. We gotta go back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Paul. What? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I couldn't help it, Paul. They're right there. Hey, I told you I'd get you back. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I got you, Paul. <laughs> Look at that. We Just all kind of work together and look. Yep. I didn't think Just cooking, cooking. cooking was that easy. Yep. <laughs> yep. I should have done this a long time ago. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> now you know how to cut the carrots. Yeah, you know how oh, to peel the potato. That's right. You, with the onions. I'm going to be quiet because you yeah. did good. You all did good. <laughs> and you know how to be a pretty good boss. Hey. All right. Oh, hey, oh. we go, man. Yeah. Hey. Having my three friends back here, it feels good. I really believe I'm gonna cook with these three again. This is the first of probably many to come. I'm glad that you guys came, everything came out and ended up good. Sure did. Thank yeah. you for you guys. Right yeah. 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 Amen. Let's dig in. Okay. This here meal will be one to remember. Yes, you wait. We're gonna have our own cooking show. Yeah. What do you think of that, Charlie? I quit. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I think you could have a cooking show without a doubt. Oh my God! Look at these guys. You have your aprons on. That's because we look so good. That's yeah. why. It's important to me to follow up on my clients to see how they've been doing. I'm gonna do that with Alicia. I have a feeling that there's new things going on in her life. Sitting on the couch that day with Kelly, started to sing my mom's song out of, you know, a million songs. That's not a coincidence. I've been doing a lot of writing music. I've written pieces of different songs, but the one that I finished is about letting all those walls down and learning that that's okay. I just wanna check in with her and see if she has anything new for me or see how she's doing in her world. Oh my God, Alicia! How are you, darling? I am all kinds of good. Well, sweetheart, I gotta tell you a little secret. I showed the song you sang to me to my husband. He was floored. Are you playing music? Are you connecting to your music? I'm starting to play for a few people and eventually I will get out and play in front of people I don't know. I'm still kind of perfecting that performance before I go out into the real world. The universe saw fit to give you a tool that touches others but also allows you to weed out all the junk that was put there by others. You know Absolutely. That. I get taken aback sometimes when I play it for somebody else and they have such a strong emotional response. <laughs> I'm just dipping my toes now, Kelly. How have you been doing with your mom being gone? Have you had any visitations from her? I always kind of felt um, my mom around me. Our time that we spent together and that validation that you gave me, that she is kind of always present. I talk to her every single day now. The 22nd was just my mom's uh, three year anniversary of her passing. This was the first year that it was okay to be that date and the kids and I spent a fun day and told stories and reminisced about her. And so it was a much more positive uh, experience on this anniversary. You are a healer in so many ways. You have a wonderful way of healing people as well. I plant a little bit of seed here and there and I let the people fertilize it. And by God, we got loads of good old fashioned, excuse my language, shit in our <laughs> lives that we can put in there. You are amazing. Well, thank you for everything that you opened up and started. Well, 
I hope to be one day sitting in an audience. I don't hear this crazy, crazy woman <laughs> screeching from the top of her lungs. It's I'll know me. it's you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Instead of waiting for inspiration to come when I'm writing that music, perhaps need to sit down and work on it. And when I need a little bit of a boot in my backside to get me moving, I think she'll be the one I call. <laughs> it's just been a really healing, really cathartic experience so I'm just really thankful for it yeah you are Alicia yes Alicia. I think it's truly important to be grateful for our gifts I'm Kelly <laughs> I'm not here. I spent way too many years running from mine and letting fear control my life but now I know there is truly nothing to be afraid of. There is a duality to life, and we all have traumas to overcome. There is a little girl in you that is still holding on to that pain, and I want you to be free from that. But we also all have gifts. Everything that happens in the kitchen here, boys, stays, stays in the here. Kitchen, huh? Talents are not to be squandered. They're to be shared. Well, she's here. You think you're emotional? She's emotional. Because <laughs> she misses you like you wouldn't believe. We say that it's about what other people may think. But the judgment, it's coming from ourselves. Whether it's music, cooking. Right yep. Look at that. We Let's all work together now. and look. Hey. All right. Oh, oh, hey, here we go, man. Woo. Hey. Woo. Or being a good listener. Be grateful for your gifts. Ask yourself, what makes you special? And then, shine your light. Because living your truth is the only way to be truly happy. Hey. Hey. And your joys will touch those around you. <laughs> My God, thank you. Be bold. Be grateful and be kind and you will shine, baby.